name's Tricia. I'm an instructor with the ACCM program at Mount Royal University, and I'm going to be demonstrating setup of an external ventricular drain for intracranial pressure monitoring and drainage. Remember to check the policy at your facility because equipment and policies may vary, so always follow the one that is pertinent to the, your workplace. Some of the essentials, though, will not change from facility to facility. So what you will need is your ventricular drain system, whatever that may be, some preloaded saline syringes, two or three should do it, a cap if it's not contained within your pressure system, a pressure line that you'll only be using one piece of, but you still need to open the pressure line for that, and a huck towel. And the huck towel may be personal preference, um, but it's something that I like to use considering that it's going into somebody's brain. So those are the things to get. When you open your system, there are a few things to remember with the ventricular drain that are important. The first is, is that you need to know where you're going to be monitoring, whether that's going to be ventricular, which is what we're going to be doing today, or whether that's going to be lumbar. On this system, it's very clearly indicated with a little head and a little lumbar spine. So make sure that you get the right one. So once you've established which area you're going to be monitoring, the other part is to know which measurement you're going to be using and choosing the correct place that you're going to be doing it. So this particular system has four, four areas on it. It has a lumbar in millimeters of mercury, it has lumbar in centimeters of water. Ventricular, again our little head, in millimeters of mercury. And ventricular in centimeters of water. So centimeters of water is the most common method of measurement used for intracranial pressure monitoring. So we'll just leave it right there at ventricular in centimeters of water. I'm going to open up my huck towel first. And I just happen to have one here waiting just gives myself a clean area to be working within. And I'm going to have a piece of equipment ready. So I'm, this is my pressure line. So you're going to use a pressure line and you're going to remove both ends of it so that all that you're left with is the transducer. I'm going to dispose of the piece, that piece, and there we go so that all that is remaining that I'm going to be using is the transducer and the pressure cable that you will then plug your cable in to go to your monitor. So those are the two important pieces that you're using. So this then goes on to my drainage system. And it attaches to this piece right here and I'm just going to attach it right now. And then I'm going to use my cap that I have ready and waiting and put it on the other end of the transducer because we need to keep everything very, very clean. Remember our ventricular spot? We're going to, that's where we're going to clamp this piece into. And it snaps right in. Okay, so that's nice and firm. Making sure all my connections are secure. So when you're getting ready to flush this, there's a couple of things to notice. There is a, almost a double redundant with these, well, it's not, it is a double redundant with these systems. So I'm gonna hang it from the pole with this cord, but I'm also going to clamp it to the pole with this clamp on the back. The last thing we want to have happen is to have one of these fall down. So if we want to make sure if something happens to this clamp that it is on this cord at the top of the pole as well. It's going to clamp it to the pole so that we have both. Your measure, and it really doesn't matter too much because your measurements, we're going to level it um, to the patient's foreman of Monroe and then we're going to set our level of drainage according to this piece, which for right now, we'll just set it 15. So then we'll level this to the patient. So the last piece for our setup is to back flush and we're just flushing this piece. 
And that's where we're gonna use our preloaded syringes. There we go. So the cap that I had on before, actually I'm gonna use this one. So from the far side of my transducer, Okay, so now I'm going to flush the system. I've got my preloaded syringe mounted onto the stopcock that's behind the transducer. I have my stopcock closed to this side of the system because I'm going to flush this side right now. So I have it open to here and I have it open through to the end. And that's why the stopcock is through like this. Okay, so now I'm just going to flush through. Clearing all the bubbles, as you would with anything else. So the last piece before I finish with this end is I'm going to turn the stopcock off to the end. I'm going to open this port and I'm going to flush this port. Okay. So that port's filled. Replace the stopcock. Turn this back off again. I'm going to backfill the system the other way. So I now need to turn the stopcock off to the patient end, which is where we were before. And then, then you'll see the initial drop. And I'm just going to go, because this is where we measure our drainage. So I just want to see a couple of drops come down. And oh, a little bit more than I wanted, but that's now finished. Okay. So my last piece that I'm going to do is to close this stopcock. Take my syringe off and replace the cap. I can get rid of this syringe. I'm going to close my hook towel around the end that will be attached to the patient. And you are now ready to plug your pressure cable in and attach this end to the drain that's inserted by your nerve surgeon.